Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast. To join a global community of financial advisors sharing and learning with one another to drive the positive evolution of financial advice, head to xyadvisor.com. This podcast is brought to you in partnership with Hub24. Hub24 make a difference in the lives of advisors by connecting you to innovative solutions that create opportunities with market-leading managed portfolios and customer service excellence. Want to know more? Visit hub24.com.au. Hey, how's it going? What do you know? Striker like Clayton here from XY, uh, getting to speak with Stephen all the way over in WA. Mate, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, of course. Now, um, what's super interesting is that we're, you know, as you do before a podcast, a couple of emails back and forth, and you mentioned that you'd come to uh, the, the, modern, the Modern Advisor event, and that was 2015, I believe. Yeah, five years ago. Yeah. Mm, something to that effect. And... Um, and we had a very short but a very impactful conversation at that time, and and it blew my mind away. So, so to give you a little bit of a background, so, uh, you know, we had no, we had very little. I mean, we'd put maybe like two events on that had gone for an hour at that stage, and this was like a full day event. And it was so difficult. I w- I'll, I'll preface by saying we've never done it again. <laughs> it was so <laughs> difficult that we've never done it again. Um, and, uh, and as a part of it, I sort of, I, I took a day off out of my business and a whole day to design, it's almost ridiculous saying this, but to design the timetable for the event. And, uh, and I, it got to the point where I was really happy with the design of the timetable, but I didn't really think that anyone would pay attention to it. And, and you came up and said to me, and I've never forgotten it. He came up and he said, uh, I saw the effort that went into the timetable. So I flew all the way over here from Western Australia to, to come to this event. And you, uh, you said you, I mean, you said it was uh, quite good. Uh, as I said to you, um, it, 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 for me, it was a life changing experience. Um, you know, we, we as advisors, we know the difference we make in our clients' lives daily. Um, and, um, you know, we, we go home at night, we feel good about ourselves. Um, but I hadn't realized the extent to so many advisors with similar like-minded approach to changing the world one client at a time. And it was, it was mind blowing. <laughs> it was just so good to see so many people who had moved onto this, you know, this new, well, you know, this new paradigm shift, you know, it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. yeah and, and I tell you like that, and you probably wouldn't know this, but that, that small sentence and the fact that you'd come so far to, to come to our event. Um, I have, I have told that story internally and thought about it, my God, probably a hundred times. And uh, you know, because everything that we've tried to do over, over the years and over it's, which is, you know, starting to, to accumulate, um, it's not always easy. And, and, uh, and sometimes just those really kind words go a thousand miles. And so I, I wanted to let you know that it's, uh, it resonated it, when I realized it was you that had said that because, and we'd been, you know, connected to have this uh, podcast and then I realized it was you. I was absolutely blown away. So thank you so much for those kind right. words. Thank, thank you for changing my life. <laughs> um, so, um, so, Emily, Emily's obviously the, uh, you know, the, the absolute gun and, and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Emily, you know, we, we there's a hilarious story in how we met. She, uh, she, I wrote a book a few years ago and she read it and she sort of said, Hey, uh, your website's great. Your book's great, but you know, it's all broken. Like the, the, the things that lead on to each other. And, and she offered to fix it for free. And I was like, actually, I, I think you would really um, serve an amazing purpose over here at XY. And she's, I mean, that was like four years ago now, and she's absolutely grown into this um, amazing, uh, amazing um, person within the advice industry. And she said to me, I've been speaking with Stephen 
and, uh, and just, and, and, and you have to interview him. And so what's really interesting about that is now, you know, you, you're, you're making an impression on her and you've said these amazing things that sort of, you know, kept me going throughout the years. And, and, uh, and I actually haven't even asked the, some of the most basic questions. So, so can we sort of learn a little bit about you? Because you've, you're obviously a very impactful person, whether you try to do that on purpose or not. And uh, I'm keen to find out what kind of things you like to do for your clients, if that's all right. Yeah, with pleasure. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, so I suppose that the first thing is um, my, um, my goal. Um, you know, people ask about business plan and my values and everything. My goal every day is uh, not a financial goal. My goal is a spiritual goal. And it's to touch a person in a meaningful way that our spirits and souls know that we've touched each other in that beautiful way. Um, almost crying, but not quite crying. We don't have to cry every day, but we know we've made, we've made that connection. We've something's touched us something a little extra from just a normal great client um, advisor relationship. Um, I learn from my um, clients as much as they learn from me. Um, and it's, it's the most incredible relationship. So I go through every single day trying to find that one experience every single day that's going to touch me and touch them in a way that's going to leave us both changed forever. So that's what I try and do every single day, get that one experience, that one fix. And, you know, my accountant obviously doesn't like that, uh, that financial <laughs> goal. And he says to me, Steve, that is a ridiculous business plan. You can't have that as your business plan. Um, but you know, I've stuck with it for now 15 years and, uh, thank God it's working. Oh my God. Um, that's a, that's a very unique position to come from in terms of the premise for why you provide advice. And, it, and that is, you know, to, to create a life changing moment. Um, I would imagine you have a, an extremely close relationship with your clients. If you're doing, if you're doing something like that, do you find that do you find that, uh, how, how would I put this? Uh, does it take a lot out of you in, in order to provide that to, 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 to so many people so frequently? It's a great question. Um, so there are days um, that I come back home shattered and there are tough appointments. Um, people go through some really tough experiences and to coach them through those experiences and to try and give them a little bit of hope, a little bit of meaning, a little bit of light. Um, but some days are just dark and some days people just need someone to listen to them and, you know, just share some of that darkness. And sometimes it's hard, but that's the rare occasion. Um, I think the 80, 20 rule applies. Um, most days I come home on, you know, feeling on top of the world, buoyed by my day. Um, and I think that's the, that's what I take out of every relationship. My teacher says, you know, there are bad moments in life. He said, but by and large, it's just us looking at most moments in life and not seeing the good. And, you know, he said, that's really what it's all about. And, you know, I look at these relationships with my clients and, um, you know, I, I talk about this one quite often. I had a, an experience with this woman who came in at uh, the height of the, you know, the, the one month bad, you know, the, the crash of COVID and she was devastated and she was in her seventies. And I, I don't know who referred her to me and I don't know her name. And I don't know anything about her anymore, but she came into my office and was standing on the other side of my boardroom desk, looking at the screen. And I showed her that although she'd lost 70 or $80,000 in her super, it was not going to affect her whole super sensitive balance and that her income wasn't going to be affected longer term. And I said to her, look, you know, it's going to be too hard for me to give you advice now. I said, but he has a money smart website. Go check it out. It's brilliant. Play around with the figures, check it out for yourself. It's all factual information. You don't need to pay me for this meeting. She left here crying. She left here crying with tears of joy that she was so relieved. I don't know her name. She, she will change my life forever in a day because that moment changed me. It changed her, but it changed me. And I summarize this year in that meeting in that I think this year has been filled with so much goodness. Uh, I was saying to a group of uh, business people yesterday, um, Perth has been the most amazing place to, to live through 2020. We've come together as a community like never before. There's been so much goodness, so much kindness, so much generosity. People working all hours to fill, you know, fill shelves and make food and to deliver food and people doing things pro bono. I don't know about advisors over there, but you know, in March we decided not to charge our clients for, uh, for all our time and we went pro bono. And 
you know, we, we just decided we couldn't profit from other people's misery. Um, and it was, you know, once, you know, once the panic was over here in Perth and it was pretty quick, obviously we started charging again. Um, and the people rewarded that kindness and people said, Steve, you know, you can't go pro bono forever. And we started charging again and, you know, it came back in, 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 in bucket loads, excuse the pun or the five buckets, man. But, um, <laughs> um, you know, it, it's, I think, I think that when a society realizes that we're just a small community on a bigger scale, um, great things happen and so many great things that happen this year. That's a very insightful way to, I guess, approach a situation where, I mean, an advisor has, I, I would say, like really shown their worth and their value this year in, in an extraordinary way. So when you know, the GFC happens, it's always like, you know, the, the once in a generation Black Swan event happens like once every 10 years, right? <laughs> and, uh, and the GFC that, that, uh, that we went through in 07, 08, there was, it, it was the fault of the financial system. And so I, I, it, it, although I wasn't um, financial planning, I was in tax at the time. So I, I was adjacent to it and, and I worked in the same office as financial planners. And so there was a, a feeling of, I guess, at least I could pick up um, that clients were uh, annoyed that the financial system had betrayed them. Mm. And there was, I guess, some, some rub off, some negative rub off residue, vicarious blame uh, to, to the advisors. Um, this time around, it was medical in nature. It wasn't, it wasn't financial in nature. It wasn't a systemic financial issue. It was, there was a silent or, or, or invisible enemy, so to speak. And, uh, and advisors realistically weren't in a position to take any of that blame. And so uh, we, we, we did a little bit of research during this time during COVID and it's been, it's been amazing to see the effects or the positivity, the positive impact that advisors have had on their clients um, just by over communicating and by taking extra actions and showing and turning up, I guess, is a, is a good way to put it. And, and there's been a, a huge sense of this is, you know, in, in, this is what advice is for. Yes, it's for the mundane and it should be for the mundane and for the everyday and for the year by year. But if there's ever sort of been a moment in time where an advisor could really stand up and show their value. It seems like it's been the last sort of nine months or so. I could imagine that you've had just an unbelievably large amount of these life-changing events in the last nine months. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those funny things, I suppose. Um, we do have life-changing events, but they happen all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know the starfish story, I'm sure. Uh, which one? So... There's a man walking along the beach and uh, he comes across a fisherman and um, the fisherman is bending down and picking up a starfish and um, the man says to the fisherman, what are you doing? And the fisherman says, well, I'm saving the starfish's life. The man looks around and there are thousands and thousands of starfish that have been washed onto the shore. He says, but you can't possibly make a difference. The fisherman bends down, picks up one starfish, throws it into the sea and says, made a difference to that one. And I think that's what this year has been about, is that if each one of us tries to make a difference, whether it be just letting someone in in the traffic, I know in Perth we're giving the wave now to say thank you to people in traffic, um, whether it be a smile, um, there's a great um, um, thing here in Perth, we don't wear masks, and people are able to see a face, they're able to see a smile, they can see that gratitude, Whereas people wearing masks, their smile's hidden. It's a terrible thing. People can't <laughs> see emotions. Yes. Um, we have to be grateful for these little things. Um, grateful for being able to uh, share moments together, touch each other. Um, you know, I um, was totally moved by um, a group of tennis players who worked out that if they had two cans of balls, um, they wouldn't have to touch the balls of, you know, like they, they, could, they would use, the, the, the server would use one can of balls and the other server would use the other can of balls. And there was just the rackets touching the balls in between, in between. And they wouldn't actually have to touch each other's um, cans of balls. And it was a remarkable experience. Here these people were so keen to be with each other 
that they invented a whole new game, essentially, just to be together. And um, it was just phenomenal. People were playing golf, and the aim wasn't to get the ball in the hole because that would mean, you know, bending down and picking up the ball and touching the flag. You know, we'd get close to the hole, and that's it. But we'd be together and walk on that golf course together. And I think that's what this year has been about. It's reminded us what's really important. And what's important is not bought with money. What's important is being together. And, um, you know, as financial planners, I think for the first time in a long time, we've realized that money doesn't solve problems. People solve problems. And that's what we've been doing is we've been working with other people to find out their, 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 their true path and what, what it is that really makes them get out of bed in the morning, get, get, um, get to work and do the things that, that they love to do. Um, you, you might know this, um, my favorite uh, saying about work is from Richard Buck. He says, work is love made visible. How do we get our clients to turn work into love, being love made visible? Um, we can't marry everyone we meet, but we can do brilliant work and we can show love for people through our actions and through our work. And um, I think that's, that's what this year has been about. I think more and more of us are doing that. And XY, I must say, is leading the way in that. Yes, we, um, we, we do try to, you know, facilitate an environment where you know, positive um, evolution of financial advice is, is something that's, you know, is, is the target that we're all aiming for. I, I think there's, there's a concept I've been thinking about for a while now, and that is financial planning is too important not to be done well. Mm-hmm. And it's almost... COVID situation in this year has been, I would say, an acceleration away from uh, the control of the conversation in financial planning has really been owned by large, powerful stakeholders uh, for decades. And the, there have always been individual advisors because, you know, we're, we're, we're very sort of independent folk. Um, and there's always been individual advisors that have sort of sprung up and sprung and, and, and peeled off all over the world to create these sort of amazing businesses. And um, I feel like the conversation around what is involved in great financial advice has flourished. These days, I can jump on a call to someone in, in Perth and then the UK and the US. And all of a sudden, the world got a lot smaller, I think, this year because everyone accepted digital meetings as almost a standard. And then as soon as that happened, well, then there was no limitations. There was no ge- geographic limitations. It was all instantaneous everywhere. Um, although in saying that, I'm in the process of doing some work with someone in, uh, in LA and in London and trying to line up Sydney, London, and, and LA is not exactly the easiest, uh, easiest situation, but, but we, we're, we're getting there. Um, yeah, there, there, there's, there's, like I said, a, a lot of positive things to come out of, of, uh, out of COVID. Um, I would love to, to know sort of where, at what point in your career did you realize that you wanted to deliver something more meaningful than traditional financial planning? What's that journey for you? I joined, um, you know, as a traditional lifey and, um, uh, I remember superannuation at the time was a 5% um, going in and 3% on going. Don't quote me on that, please. I mean, it's, it's 20 years ago now, but it's, it, I think that's what, what it was. And, um, you know, clients, you know, we're, we're basically having, you know, for every dollar they put into super, we were getting 5 cents in the dollar. Hello. Um, for every dollar they had in their super, we were getting 3%. And granted, balances were smaller, but, it, it, you know, I look back on that 20 years later and I think to myself, that's almost criminal. Um, <laughs> yeah. you, know, it, it, you know, if it wasn't legal, it would be criminal. Yeah. Um, and I, I realized that something was wrong, but I, I was a new advisor and I just didn't know what to do to fix it. And then I came across an advisor who charged a 1% fee for service. And I thought to myself, huh, fee for service, not a commission. That sounds like a reasonable Solution. So anyway, so, you know, he explained how that all worked and, you know, started doing the 1% fee for service. Um, But I realized that really wasn't my style either because people don't always have to see me. 
You know, so like, why should I keep getting paid if they don't see me? It's like me going to the doctor and he gets paid a 500 bucks a year if I don't see the doctor. I mean, like, it just doesn't make sense. And I don't need to see the doctor every six months because like, I don't, you know, if, totally. if everything's good for the year and you go for your checkup and everything's good and you do the things that the doctor tells you to do, you shouldn't need to see him until the next year when he tells you you're healthy. Yes. And, you know, your blood tests are good and your cholesterol's good and everything's good. Why go back, you know, before? And um, unless something happens in, in between and you know, maybe you feel sick or something, then you go back. And the same thing with my clients. Like, why do they need to see me unless something happens that goes off plan? Um, the client I just said goodbye to um, just before this call, she said, when do I next need to see you? I said, well, you know, the next logical point is where, you know, your mortgage broker sorts out your mortgage. And then we see whether our um, um, assumptions are correct. And we, you know, put in the, you know, all the, the, the money into your super that we planned. But, you know, that's the next logical point in June next year. And, and she said, and, and so then, I said, well, you're welcome to call me anytime. You know what my hourly rate is. I said, I don't anticipate you'll need to call me, but if you're going to bed at night and you're not 100% comfortable and you're not 100% sure about our plan, give me a call. That's what I'm here for, to make you feel better. And I suppose that started emerging from 2004 onwards until we did a seminar. And I don't have the exact date. I haven't got that prepared. But around 10 years ago, we decided to go commission-free. And when we went commission-free, that changed my life because, firstly, I almost lost my business because, uh, you know, there weren't enough people actually doing it to, um, uh, to learn from. Secondly, mm. I ostracized myself from all my colleagues. I remember going to a breakfast meeting with all my colleagues and saying I loved Australian soup and I loved, you know, um, <laughs> you know I love commission-free life insurance. But one guy actually almost hit me. Uh, <laughs> but but I, got, I was, you know, I was literally dropped off that invite like in two seconds. I was definitely not welcome back. And I, uh, <laughs> Uh, and that's only 10 years ago, um, just for saying that Australian super was a good industry super fund, you know, like, and I, and I, I showed them that, you know, you know, compare the pair thing. And I literally, I actually thought they were going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I get, yes, you should write a, you should write a book called how to win, uh, friends, uh, you know, yeah. Anyway, I learned quite quickly that, you know, I was the outlier at that meeting. And um, anyway, they're good people that, you know, they just didn't agree with my point of view. Yeah. And, um, you, know, uh, you know, I jest sometimes about that meeting. It's, you know, I'm not stretching the truth too much. But at the same time, uh, I think um, there are no such thing as bad people, just good people who have been maybe misguided. And, you know, yeah. I, think, I think the guidance has been better in the last five or ten years. Most advisors are doing really good work. Um, and, you know, as, as, as Australian super knows, they're not the be all and end all either. You know, there are other, other companies doing really good jobs as well. So true. So true. Um, I could imagine you sitting at that breakfast and, uh, and, 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 <laughs> and having that conversation. Actually, at the, modern, at the modern advisor event that we had in 2015, I remember Chris Bates got up and spoke about uh, that he wasn't taking um, any insurance commissions um, at the time. And I remember that being, uh, you know, like groundbreaking. I mean, a lot of ways it still is. And, and we've always had, and I've always had the view that um, to do whatever, uh, you know, you want to do as a financial planner. Now I, I know some extremely successful advisors who take commissions and I know some extremely successful advisors who don't take any commissions. It's not an indictment on commissions, just to be clear. Oh, totally. Uh, that, that was not, that, that, you know, there's world according to Steve and there's world according <laughs> to, you know, to Clayton. And, and, and we can have two different approaches. Yes. But it's a very happy outcome. Um, it's just that I have to find out what's right for me. Totally. Uh, and, yeah, and, like, you know, and it's, you know, what's right for me is certainly not right for the vast majority of people I meet. Um, you know, as my wife will say, you know, <laughs> my world's a crazy world, but I'm happy in it. So, you know, I'll say that. Well, no, that's exactly right. And, um, and I took, I took uh, insurance commissions, I'd say, for the vast majority of the time that I uh, ran, my, ran my business. It was something that I'd, I think, I, I was trialing it just before uh, I had left. I, I, I sort of set up the, the company to sell. And by that stage, I'd uh, made the decision to see what it would look like to give advice without commissions. And, and it was definitely achievable. 
Um, I think you're exactly right in terms of like the influence that people or, or, or the misguidedness, I think that people receive coming into this industry. Um, I, I, from, from what I can tell, uh, I think advisors learning from other advisors ends up in a much better position, both from a profitability stance and from a value to advise to, to client stance. I think that there's a, there's a, because you need to do two things. You need to uh, provide value and receive value. And, uh, and the, that, that whole conversation around what is valuable for a client and how do I receive as much value in return as possible uh, upon delivering value yourself is, uh, is essentially the name of the game. And, uh, and it's, it's kind of interesting, whereas, you know, traditionally the, the conversation has been, well, this product over here is fantastic. And this product over here does all of these things. Um, these features and benefits that you get from this, this product is, is, you know, better than the features and benefits over here. Whereas the conversation is now look at the features and benefits of my service, you know? So it's still, it's, it's like it, it, where the conversation has moved from a, an external features and benefits. Like look over here, check out the pamphlet of this other company to look at what it is that I do for you. Not, not a, not a product, not, not another company, but me. If you don't mind interrupting, um, I think the next level for us is to stop focusing on us and to, you know, to take the, the thought process and to go, it's not about what we do for you that we need to tell you. It's what we do for you that you feel. So when you go to the doctor, does your doctor tell you for 10 minutes what services he's going to give you? Or does he <laughs> just give you the service? <laughs> I mean, so yeah. why do we have to tell our clients what it is we're going to do for them? Why don't we just do it? Yeah, just focus on the outcome. The doctor will say, you know, you're, you're going to feel better once you're, you know, you do this because I'm, I'm telling you to do it. Yeah. You know, a teacher said to me recently, being humble doesn't mean thinking less of yourself. It just means thinking of yourself less. Huh. And I think, you know, that is such a good thing. And I've been trying to internalize that. And I think that that's where we are as an advice community. We've got to think of ourselves less. doesn't mean we think less of ourselves. Yeah. We are a brilliant community. We have so much to offer, so much knowledge. The yes. skill set that we have is unbelievable. Yes. And we're able to take people's deepest, darkest fears. We're able to get people to expose their raw self to us within minutes of meeting them. Yes. And we're able to get all that and we're able to take those fears and to turn that fear into hope. How many people can do that? <laughs> Who can do that? How many people do you know that can have that skill set? Not many. It's an incredible profession. It is. And we have that built in innately to us. Yes. And, you know, I think we, when you think to yourself, well, you know, this is what I'm going to do for you next year. This is what I'm going to do for you last year. I mean, the reason I don't um, have any ongoing fees is because I don't have to worry about fee disclosure statements. I don't have to yeah. worry about opt-in. I just give them an invoice. And I have a service agreement and I do the service and then I give them an invoice. It's that <laughs> simple. I mean, you know, I don't go to my accountant and, you know, he says, well, this is what I did for you last year. This is what I'm going to do for you next year. I don't know my doctor and goes, oh, last year we did six blood tests and this year we're going to do seven blood tests. You know, last year we checked your nostril and this year we're going to check your ears. You know, that's not, you know, really? The guy just looks <laughs> after me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you, you you charge out in a very similar way to an accountant then. You, you say, uh, this is what, you know, that we're, we're, we're signing on for a year of working together. Why do I have to put myself in a round page? I just charge the way I charge. So I don't charge like anyone else. I don't have to be like anyone else. I can just do it the way it suits me. So yeah. I do it the way it suits my style. And I have a, a business partner who does it similarly to me, um, you know, and um, I have these two uh, uni graduates that are finishing up um, from, uh, from the university here. The AFA put us in touch through um, the Chamber of Commerce here in Perth. And uh, I think they're 27 the uni graduates. Two of them are working in my office with me doing their 120 hours. And I'm looking at these kids and I'm seeing them grow in front of my eyes. I'm watching them realize the power we have to change people's lives. I brought one of them into a meeting with a client, a long-term client. And like, I left the meeting, I said, so how was that? I think you'd talk about my advice and my brilliant prowess and everything. 
the only thing he said to me after that meeting was, I didn't realize how close your relationship with your clients would be. I didn't know how close, you know, I didn't realize how personal we'd get. That was his, he was blown away by how much we get to know each other, how much we trust each other, how much we love each other. Mm. And, and that was something that he just couldn't understand. He said, like, nowhere in the textbooks did it show you this incredible two-way relationship of trust of keeping each other going day in and day out. Man, how do you put that in a textbook? Uh, obviously, you've done a lot of um, learning. Uh, you've referenced a, uh, someone that you learned from a couple of times just during, during this podcast. And so obviously, learning is a big part of who you are, I can just gather from our conversation. Um, how, would you, how would you put it in a textbook, the, the, the stuff that you're talking about now? How, what's the best way to get what's in your head into other advisors' heads? It's a good, good thing. So my teacher says to me, you have to find the right teacher. Um, so you, you, I, think, I think it's important to know that there's some things that can't, that can't be written down. There are some things that fo- you pass on from father to son, father to son, father to son. And if you think I'm, clo- I'm quoting Bloodsport, um, Frank Duke, <laughs> yes, I am. Um, <laughs> um, you know, it's, you know it's, a great, it's a great tradition. And some traditions that just have to be passed down. Um, and, you know, I, I think of that movie Bloodsport, also a pivotal movie in my life, where the teacher says to him, never commit yourself to one style. Keep an open mind. And I think that's his financial advice. We just need to keep an open mind, find the right teacher, stick with that teacher, learn from that teacher. And, you know, I'm very blessed here. I have a 75-year-old advisor in the office who is showing me what to do just by pitching up at work every single day. Wakes up in the morning, he goes to his Pilates, he's here at 8 o'clock in the morning, he sees his odd client here or there. He's been fee for service since the dinosaurs and he does a great job for his clients. As he says, his problem every year is making sure that his clients withdraw enough from super because they don't need, they've got more than what they need. And I think to myself, that's an advisor, a guy that knows his clients as well as he knows his wife a person that treats his clients the way he treats his mother. That's the way it should be. Um, I have my mother working with me uh, since COVID, not at the office, but um, just before COVID, she was working in the office. And, uh, you know, she'll give me the thumbs up sometimes on the phone and she'll give me the thumbs down and she'll say, you're a better person than that. You're a better son. I didn't raise you like that. And, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's important just to have someone go, you know, Steve, you, are a bit, you, you can do better. Or Steve, you did that really well. You spoke really well. And, you know, keep that up. And we just need to think, our mother's sitting right here on our shoulder. You know, just treat others as you would want your mother to treat them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you mentioned you started your career in life insurance, at, at least, you know, in, in financial services. Were you doing any, anything else before you got into financial services? Because I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where this super unique sort of mindset towards advice comes from? Like what was your experience before getting into advice? Um, so I got married young uh, and before I got married, uh, I was a scuba diving instructor and um, I learned some amazing life lessons being a scuba diving instructor. Um, but even before then I was a barman and I was a barman for five years while I was studying at uni and it irritates me that uh, my five-year degree, um, you know, had to be redone because uh, <laughs> as I said, oh, you know what, you're too old. You know, we can't uh, recognize that degree. Anyway, uh, that's another story for another time. Let's not go there. <laughs> and um, anyway, so at, at, I was at uni and I was studying as a barman for five years. And um, um, sorry, I was working as a barman for five years. And I learned an incredible amount from, from, from my clients, from my customers, from the people I worked with. But... There was this one friend of mine, I won't mention his name just because he's very prominent in our community. And he, he said to me um, one day, he said, Steve, I got an extra check from the accountant. So I look at this check, it was like in those days, I think it was 500 Rand, which is $50. But at the time, it seemed like a fortune of money. And, like, you know, probably, you know, in, in, in adult terms now, that probably like a $10,000 check if you were to give it some real value today. And, um, you know, I looked at this and there was a note. And the accountant had written on this note, um, dear XYZ, and he said, thank you so much for folding your notes, the money notes, the same way and putting a paper clip or a, a paper clip on the notes the same way every single time. 
everyone's tills always balanced, but your notes were always facing the right way and the things I could just go and deposit the cash at the bank without having to check all the bundles of cash every single time. And he, she gave him this massive bonus for that tiny little thing. And, you know, my kids know this story really well. I talk to them all the time. It's that little 1%. It's that little thing that we learn along the way, that just that tiny little differentiation. The difference between Federer winning on Nadal winning sometimes is a two-point difference or one-point difference in this five sets of tennis. And he taught me right then and there as a 20, 21-year-old, 22-year-old, that firstly, you learn from everyone. And second of all, you never know when you're touching someone's life. You may be touching someone's life in ways that you can never fully appreciate and you may never know that. Sometimes you are lucky enough to get someone t- telling you that, but often you don't. And I always say to my kids, just be like him and just go the extra mile and just make a little bit of, it, bit of an extra difference. Makes all the difference. And um, so that was it. I was a barman, I was a scuba diving instructor. And then I went in to, into the factory and I swept the floors. And then I... Um, eventually directed the company and then moved to Australia. And then, and then basically you, you started in financial services from the moment you, you hit Oz? Yeah, I was very fortunate. I met a, um, a, a very generous person here, um, uh, John Schaefer, very prominent in our community here in Perth, a uh, wonderful business person, wonderful person. And uh, he, he was in concrete uh, and it, amongst many other things. And he said to me, Steve, so tell me about concrete in South Africa. How does it work? Um, I said, oh, you know, we were part of a family business, been going for 100 years, we knew everyone, and, you know, we were just very blessed. And he said, and tell me, how many people do you know in Perth? I said, well, including you, three. <laughs> and uh, he said, so what do you think your chances are of, of succeeding on, in concrete? And I said to him, probably not good. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I became a financial planner. Um, you know, it's, uh, I got very fortunate, someone picked me off the street, picked me up off the street almost literally. <laughs> and then gave me an opportunity and believed in me. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'll be very grateful, to, you know, forever for that, uh, for that opportunity. That's amazing. And then, I mean, the way that you talk about advice, I'd imagine that you sound like you, you enjoy it. And, but do you enjoy it as much as what it sounds like you do, I guess, is the right question. Compared to my wife, no. So <laughs> my wife's a professional photographer. Right. And she, um, she goes to work in the morning and she gets paid to work. And then when she wants to take a break, what do you think she does? takes a break she takes a break she goes and takes photos and she edits those photos for herself and for her own soul wow i'm not like that so when i take a break i don't do financial planning i do other things i study i have a you know a few groups i study with i play poker i play tennis i go you know i I just i'm I'm an ordinary guy i'm not quite as superhuman as she is um but that's really enjoying it so am i at that level where um, i love my work like my wife no but compared to myself you know because i think the question is do I love my work as much as Stephen Kerbel should love his work, rather as much as my wife? You know, Judy Kerbel's a brilliant photographer. She's great at what she does. She loves her work and you can see it. Um, do I love it as much as her? No, but I can't compare myself to her. I can only compare myself to myself. So if I have to answer the question, I can't imagine a better version of my life. Um, two years ago, I um, was climbing Mount Elbrus in Russia. Uh, it's one of the seven summits. And I was with my very close cousin who climbed many mountains together and uh, he wants to be there. And uh, I was desperate to go to Everest and he said no. And um, so I've learned that he's wiser than I am. So I've, you know, I just do what he tells me to do. Anyway, so we're on this mountain, we have 4,000 meters and everything you can imagine about this mountain is, you, you can't imagine how beautiful it is. You can't imagine the feelings you're experiencing. You can't imagine the community you're with you with eight or nine people that become your lifeline to, to life. And yeah. um, I got really sick. Um, I, um, my oxygen levels dropped to 46. My friends who are doctors told me that it's not really 46 because below 60, the instrumentation isn't clo- you know, accurate enough to really assess it and measure it. But the bottom line is I was almost dead. And uh, I was probably within a minute or two of dying. And uh, I've got some serious, serious, serious medications, um, steroids, you know, put into me and uh, it was a triple dose, which is illegal in most countries, but in Russia, it's the guy seemed to get away with it and save my life. And um, 
the thing that kept going through my head, and uh, excuse me, this is a very personal thing and a very spiritual thing, but it must be said the way it was felt. God is king. God has always been king, and God will always be king. You know, for me, it was not about me. In that moment, I realized I had no control. I think that's what the pandemic has taught us this year, whatever our belief system is, that we don't have control over the big things. And I certainly didn't have control over my body at that moment in my life. Afterwards, and after I survived, the doctor said to me, how come you were so calm? He said he'd been through these experiences before, but no one had been so calm. And I said, it's not that I was calm. It's that I was trusting. I've had a brilliant life up until now. So if, if it's my turn to go and my time to go and God wants me to go, that's his wish. But if he sends me back, it means that I've got so much more to do for people. And therefore, <laughs> I must come back and do it. So either way, my life is a good life and blessed life. And that is a, such a great way of looking at it. And that's my life. So I, I don't know. I can't, I can't imagine better. I, I say, you know, people laugh at me. I have a very routine life. I do the same thing. I wake up at 5 o'clock, go to gym, come to work, eat the same food see the same people, you know, I've got the same friends, I play the same poker with the same group I've been with for 20 years, I've got the same study session, I, you know, my life is very, very structured. But, you know, as a teacher said to me, so is cricket. There are tons of rules for cricket. And yet, you get these geniuses like Sir Donald Bradman, you get these geniuses like Sachin Tendulkar, Steve Smith, um, my, one of my great time, you know, he was like, my next door neighbor, Grant Pollock, was, you know, a genius cricket player. Wow. And, yeah. And, um, you know, within a set of rules, within a rigid set of rules, you, you can become everything you need to be. And, um, you know, so that's how I find my life. You know, I wear the same pants every day and the same shirt every day. And, you know, people think I'm boring, but it's just less decisions to make. The, the the thing about wearing the same pants and the same uh, shirt, I feel like uh, wasn't as it wasn't at the same level as the, of the inside of everything else that came before it. That I mean, you you've got a, an amazing um, view of life, obviously. Like uh, I mean, to to be to be calm in a moment of death is is a is is something that I don't think many people could do. I I don't think I I certainly couldn't do it. You haven't been there yet. You don't know. Right. Okay. Of your, your limitations, those limitations will belong to you. Yeah, I, well, that's a really good point. Um, and so, and Richard Buck as well, by the way. Pardon? That was Richard Buck as well. <laughs> the thought process that you put into, I mean, uh, you're, you're obviously a very considered man. Um, I could imagine that your clients get a lot of, uh, a, you know, a, a high level of confidence in the fact that you consider things in terms of what's the best thing for them. Um, what, what's, what's your methodology for acquiring new clients? Because are, are you, are you taking that sort of considered nature uh, and applying that to, to, uh, to marketing or is it just simply uh, your clients are finding so much uh, value in what it is that they're getting from you that they're just referring you, uh, to, to friends what, yeah, what's your client acquisition method my marketing lecturer would be horrified at my marketing strategy <laughs> um, it's 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 woeful um i uh, I, I just i haven't um translated well to this um um you know this new world where you know where we deal with you know people on tvs and things like that i i'm, I'm a one-to-one -one person um i i love seeing people's eyes I love pe seeing people's eyes light up. I love to see, you know, the small reflexes when they're pinching their fingers, when they're nervous and when they relax and their body starts to relax, their muscles relax. Um, you know, you make an impact. And I, I don't get that same, quite that same feeling on, 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 on the internet or on Zoom or on, on, on TV. I'm trying, uh, you know, it's a skill that I've, I'm yet to develop, but I'll eventually hopefully get there one day. Um, so marketing, not my strong suits yet. Um, um, it's not to say that, uh, you know, I won't focus on this in the future, but for now, um, just really, you know, when people come into the office, work out if I can help them, um, how I can help them, give them a, a cost, uh, you know, of, of that, let them go away and, re, you know, assess it. And if they, if they want to come back, let them come back and, you know, we can work together. Um, I, um, I have a, a fairly large referral network of advisors that I refer to for different specialities. 
uh, the professionals, bookkeepers, accountants, more, you know, like you name it. Um, you know, you, you've got to have a team of people that can help other people when they need that help. Um, I'm not an expert in everything. Um, I have a business partner who um, is 25 years old, much younger and much um, smarter and much more considered than I am. And I learn from him every day. And he has a different way of uh, treating his clients that is fantastic. So I refer to him as well. But, you know, I, I suppose one of the things is, you know, I've said to my clients, I'm not a jealous advisor. Um, I think that the best way to help them is to let them sometimes go and to, to experience other things and other people and other ideas. Um, I know with myself, um, you know, blood sports and never commit yourself to one style. Uh, keep an open mind. It's, it's, it's my, um, it's my mantra almost in life. And yet, um, I'm, I'm so dogmatic in so many ways that the paradox doesn't elude me. <laughs> Mate, this this has been uh, a very awesome way. This is going to be one of the last podcasts for the year. And I got to say, to to be able to come back and uh, to tell you that, yeah, you've, you've had a huge impact on X, Y, just by your kind words all those years ago is uh, is phenomenal. So so thank you so much for uh, for coming on and, and sharing uh, uh, on the XY podcast. Emily was definitely right. <laughs> absolutely uh, the right decision to, to get you on. So thank you so much for your insights. I think you come at advice from a really unique way, a really considered way. Um, and I'm sure, you know, advisors probably learn a bunch. And so, yeah, mate, enjoy the rest of the year. And, uh, and yeah, I'm sure we'll uh, touch base again in 2021. We'll make every moment count. Enjoy. Done. All right. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Thank you.